I know that we are getting close to lunch and everyone is getting angry. Let's keep on going for another half an hour. So now we're moving to a different topic. Uh, I'm going to introduce you the Edof Innovation Accelerator at the World Food Program. And we're going to speak about blockchain and how to apply blockchain and blocks itself as to social activities and to make this work better. So please, a big applause to Daniel Korbash. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and like, so those of you who are wondering, what is the guy uh, doing here on stage talking about blockchain and uh, effective aid? So my name is Bernard Koch, I'm the head of the Innovation Accelerator of the World Food Program. If you've never heard of us, uh, it's actually the agency of the UN that is there to fight for any climate on this planet. So just a little bit of a scene, so like, why are we actually talking about that? Um, when we're talking about just global hunger, like I'm taking you a little bit of a journey, it's like right now on this planet, still one in nine people is considered hungry, which means they don't have enough calories to live a healthy life. Now, a lot of you may not actually know that from a personal uh, relationship. I mean, you may know that from some of the stuff you see in the media, like natural disasters. You may have seen that from like uh, disasters also war. And there's also something that's called uh, essentially uh, chronic hunger. Now, chronic hunger is something that essentially uh, children or people that are essentially are not uh, wealthy enough so you can live a healthy life. Now, as for well, a food program, you may have seen or seen it a lot in the news where it's about like uh, there's food being delivered to people in Syria, uh, for instance, like or in the middle of war zone in South Sudan and so on. This is essentially what the World Food Program usually does in conjunction with the Red Cross request and other NGOs. So globally, right now we reach 80 million people in 84 countries, including uh, more than 6 million people uh, in and around Syria. Um, and a surprising number of that is by now actually cash based transfers, and this is where the tie with blockchain comes. Um, because what we need to, like if you're donating now $10 or $100 or 100 euros uh, to a food program because you want to actually give cash to 100 people, because uh, what we need to make sure is that your money is spent in the most effective way. So we look at what can we actually do in terms of really end hunger. Now, Ending hunger is something that uh, some of you may know, like actually we as a world are making progress. So right now we have 850 million hungry people on this planet. Um, historically there was actually over a billion. Now, personally, I also believe that one of the levers to actually get to the zero curve, to actually get to the down curve, it could be through technology, including blockchain. Now, some what do you think? Is actually in countries like, you know, talking about Lebanon or Jordan or Syria, do you think blockchain is their solution to that? Well, the first question you need to answer is, um, what actually about connectivity? Um, every second person on this planet right now already actually has regular internet access. Um, and when you compare it, for instance, just talking about connectivity in different countries, Germany has 90%, so which means 90% of the German population's internet access. Um, in Lebanon, which is 76 percent. Uh, incidentally, that's the same percentage as in the U.S. I don't know if any of you are coming from the United States. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out whether the people who are in the U.S. who don't use internet are. I mean, it's about 24 percent. Um, no, but now let's go to uh, the actual problem, which is like blockchain for more effective aid. And our program is called Building Blocks. The basic problem is this. There's millions of people who are displaced. Uh, and who are in refugee camps like this one here, uh, and essentially we need to either get physical food or cash to people. So one of the ideas that uh, people had like years ago, really, is okay, instead of giving any kind of food, let's just give people cash. Last year in total as well, there was a total of $1.4 billion that were actually given to people in terms of like money vouchers or bank cards so they could go into stores and buy food. Now imagine $1.4 billion, every single percentage point that we can save here and make it more efficient means more money for the people to buy food. So it's actually very relevant, so like that every dollar that's being donated is actually going to the people. 
Now, so in, in our accelerator to support the project, it was uh, Humam, you see in this picture, one of our finance managers, he had an idea. Why don't we use blockchain e-wallets to provide uh, cash to people? So one month in, and so he was teamed up with one of the entrepreneurs from the accelerator and uh, a startup here from Munich uh, called Valrella. And so one month in, they did the first pilot with 100 people in Pakistan. You see him here actually distributing cash to people um, using a mobile wallet. Um, and so the people would come with a uh, normal feature, Nokia phone, uh, in the uh, uh, merchant which offers a smartphone, and essentially that is a, would record blockchain transactions. Right now, we actually have a development system, as you will know from blockchain, there's a mutable record uh, that we have uh, developed right now. This is the private theory of blockchain that we're using. Um, what are the reasons? And so after this uh, one month uh, kind of pilot in Pakistan with 100 people, five months later the second pilot was already with 10,500 people in Jordan in a refugee camp. Now you see here the, these men here, they essentially they're going to a store and they can authenticate the blockchain transaction with the iris scan. So essentially um, they, when they go into, they just, you know, go to the store, take all the food they want, they go to the checkout point, uh, they actually pay with the blink of an eye. Um, and why do we do that? One, it's actually more efficient for us because using these e-wallets, we, instead of having 10,500 individual bank accounts and like uh, tens of thousands of transactions every month, we just authenticate and record those transactions on blockchain. And then we have right now four transactions per month that we actually transfer cash to the retailer. Um, so at present, we're saving 98% of the banking fees. Um, the second uh, advantage that we're having is it's more transparent. So we have a full real-time uh, record of what are people buying where. Uh, previously, we spent lots of time reconciling data between like the bank, the merchant, our own records. Now it's all a blockchain. There's only one truth, and it's beautiful because it's essentially a blockchain transaction. And the last point, which is actually the most important one, is enhances collaboration. So it's not only about just saving money, but we can actually work better together with other grand agencies, other NGOs. Imagine the situation where if you are a refugee in a refugee camp, you may get a card from World Food Program, you may get a card from another NGO. Sometimes people may run around with multiple cards. Uh, if we can have the blockchain, it essentially takes all the, um, the ego out of the equation. It's no longer it's our system, it's no longer somebody else's, it's, it's the blockchain that we're using. Um, and where are we right now? Right now, uh, the program is on the scale of 100,000 people. Uh, so th this means all the refugees that are currently in refugee camps in Jordan are actually uh, using these e-wallets from us. So it's actually one of the systems where we're using the blockchain technology on a large scale for a new state that's other than cryptocurrencies. Um, and the plan is uh, actually to keep on increasing that. So up till the end of the year, we want to increase uh, the number of people uh, to actually cover all the 500,000 uh, refugees in Jordan that we're currently uh, providing cash transfers to. Uh, and over $11 million have actually been transferred via this e-wallet system so far. Now, is that the end of the journey? No, it isn't. The other key aspect that we're working on, and I think this is really important to understand why are we doing all of that, is not to have an in-house or a full program blockchain system. I mean, that actually doesn't make any sense at this stage. We're doing this so that this could become an e-wallet that's used for multiple UN agencies, other NGOs, other partners. Uh, and it's the perfect example of having different people working together, and it's just an inbuilt system that on the blockchain is built for collaboration, it's built for people that may want to share information, but maybe not everything. Um, and so we're very actively right now, I mean, the press release is going to come out soon, working uh, to onboard another UN agency and another international NGO. So we will all use the very same blockchain system. Uh, and I'm really excited about that because that will really uh, bring the power of blockchain and actually show that it's possible not only to use blockchain for you know trading Bitcoin or Ether or whatever, but to do something that's useful in actual life and actually for people that will see that. Um, so far, we've obviously got uh, quite some positive uh, press reviews about that, like you know even when you're seeing it uh, in you know. Um, you might have seen that in Germany, MIT Tech Review, Fast Company, and other things. 
Um, so this is something we're seeing that blockchain can really help us solve real issues. So one of the future explorations right now that we're actually looking into is using blockchain technology for supply chain applications. So in our recent programs, we had startups, one using supply chain technology for inland transport from the port of Djibouti into Ethiopia, and the other one was a startup in Rwanda, uh, actually tracking special nutrition food. Why is that important to us? I mean, it's, it's not for just using the technology, it's also about like, what is the problem we're trying to solve, and we do see that blockchain is one of these key enablers, game changers that we can use to provide better help and to also build better systems for people, also even in developing countries. Now, um, for the sake of like, I know you all want to go to lunch and you may still have some questions, uh, I'll leave it at that and uh, thank you very much for attaching your questions, uh, you know, ask now or approach you later. Thank you very much. Does anyone have some questions?